Hello everybody, in this episode we're going to continue our discussion on the basics of Linux. This is episode 5, so be sure to check out the previous 4 episodes to get up to speed. But basically, we're all going to be able to follow along with this pretty easily. We'll just go to our home directory, and we're going to talk about a really important tool that if you want to do numerous things in Linux and have things running but you know, you only have one terminal window here. How do you run numerous applications in the background and all of this stuff? Cause you know, if you're on Mac, you can just create a new tab, right? You can just do that. But when you're connected to a computer, so for me, I'm connected to a Linux server through SSH, I can't just create a new tab. And I don't want to have to connect to the computer through numerous SSH connections. So we're gonna talk about how to manage this. Now I know what you're thinking, where in the world did you get this Linux server? And let me tell you, Hostinger, who is sponsoring this series. So Hostinger provided this virtual private server for me. It's a fantastic way to get started. If you wanna follow along with these videos, then go ahead and sign up for Hostinger and get your Linux server. I'm gonna sneeze. Oh no. <laughs> subscribe <laughs> oh that was powerful so let's install screen so sudo apt install screen all right so the easiest way to start a new screen you can think of a screen as a tab inside of the terminal is to say screen hyphen s capital s here and then you can give it a name so i don't know we'll just come up with something dumb important and now well, everything went away. Well, now we are inside of that screen so we can start something different here. So for example, I will list the files and I'll just try to fill up some of the screen here. Nah, I meant screen like this screen, but it's also the screen, yeah, Never mind. So now to exit the screen, you say control A, control D and boom, it's gone. So to see the screens that we have active, we say screen hyphen ls and it says there is a screen on 7038 important this is just kind of a note to ourselves of what it's about and to reopen that screen we just say screen dash r and now it's back open so control a d screen dash r all right so now what happens if you have multiple screens well you can specify a number which is this number right here so seven zero three eight hitting enter and it's going to open that one so we can try that out by creating two screens so we'll say screen hyphen s not important and now this one we're going to do something that's totally not important here so we'll just do something really silly all right so we got that there let's exit that screen and now when we say screen ls with the hyphen there, we hit enter and we have a few screens here. Let me scroll out so we can see them nicely. We have 7061, 7038, and we can choose which one we want to use by typing in the number. So we'll say screen hyphen R7061 to get the not important one, and then screen dash R7038 to get the important one. So there you go. Now you can kind of see how you can manage numerous things at once all within one Linux terminal. This is awesome, not just for typing out different things in different screens, but if you have an ongoing process where you want to see that process go in the terminal, you can do that in a new screen and then you can basically put it on the back burner while that's running, you can go do something else. So for example, I use this tool specifically for some cryptocurrency stuff where I have a process running and it shares the logs as it's going. And I have eight of those running in eight different screens. It's just a little bit more helpful to me because I can see the logs as they go instead of just going and looking at log files. So to see something like this, I mean, I'm not gonna do some cryptocurrency stuff at the moment, but what we can do is we can open one of these screens and we can say Vim, and we can still exit that screen using the same control A, D, and now we can go back to typing whatever we want. And then if we need to go back to that Vim session, 
we can just say screen hyphen R. Okay, guess we gotta type in that code. Six seven zero six one. And Vim is exactly where we left it. Vim itself has essentially the same capability built in. So you can have Vim open in the in the background. And there's different ways of doing this. So I'm not saying this is the only way to do it. But for me, I like to just learn one tool and try to become familiar with it. So I would just prefer to do it through screens. So I don't have to learn new commands. It's hard to keep it all up in this half-functioning brain. So... That is how you use screens. Now I want to talk about another option with this, and that is if you want to start a screen and have that running in the background and you don't have to close it, that's what I'm going to talk about now. We can say screen hyphen DM and then some command. And when I was first doing this, I couldn't get it to work. So I was saying echo hello, but as soon as I did this, it would disappear. So the screen will actually die when this command is done and it'll close. So to show this, we could just do a sleep. So if we said sleep for 100, we hit enter. And now when we say screen hyphen LS, there are three screens running. So we have important, not important, and then just the one we just created just now. <laughs> I just said just a lot. And eventually this is going to die in about 100 seconds. But if this was an ongoing service, then it's not just going to close out. It's going to run in basically already detached mode. And this is nice because if you're, for example, creating a shell script, you can just launch numerous screens and have those start in detached mode. Here's a good question on Stack Exchange with an example of how to do multiple commands. So I'm going to take this. I mean, you can type it out. I just wanted to show my source. I'm going to paste this here. And basically what this will do is it'll sleep for 10 seconds and then do something else. And I wanted to show you something that's a little interesting. So I'm going to say ls dash la semicolon ls dash la semicolon ls dash la semicolon. And then one more like so. And then actually one other thing I'm going to uh, you could say sleep for, you know, another 100 seconds or something just to, so it doesn't die. Or alternatively, we can add exec sh at the end. So I'll paste that here. And I'm going to run this. So now when we say screen ls, we have 7119. So we'll open that screen hyphen r 7119. And it's starting to ls stuff. Uh, looks like I forgot to put spaces there. So let me escape and fix that real quick. Put a space there, there, and there. And just so I have a little bit more time to open this, I'm going to set this to 30 seconds. So hit enter. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open that screen. Just um, before I do that, I'm just going to confirm, confirm the the screen number. So 7131 is the new one we just created. So screen R7131. And when we open that, there's absolutely nothing on here. It's currently sleeping and that timer's ticking down from 30 seconds. So eventually it's going to list a bunch of stuff on the screen here. And there we go. All right, cool. So let's scroll up. Oh, oh what is this? Just type control A and then escape. And now you're in copy mode, which will allow you to go up using the arrow keys. So we can scroll up and see the history of this screen. Now, if it's a really long output, it's not gonna show everything. So I think you can configure that how much you want saved in that screen. But for this example, it works perfectly fine. Then once you're done with this, you just hit escape to abort copy mode and then control a d to escape out of it last thing i wanted to share is how to delete a screen so if we list the screens out screen ls and let's say we want to quit this one and this one what we do is we say screen hyphen xs capitals and then the number so for example 7131 and then quit hit enter and now when we list the screens, you can see there's only three left. Let's go ahead and delete that other one. We don't want 7119. 
and there we go we should be good back to normal so now we just have those two screen sessions cool cool thank you for watching that's all i got on screens again thank you so much for our sponsor hostinger the sponsor of this episode be sure to subscribe if you want to get more sweet content may go into more episodes in the series if you guys find it interesting so leave a comment in the comment section below what you would want to see in these upcoming videos there's a lot more we didn't talk about specifically with dealing with file permissions and security and users and all those other different things that come with linux that you might not have to worry about as much in mac or windows I think in general, those operating systems have a little bit more hand-holding, a little bit more user-friendly for the consumer, whereas Linux gives you a little bit more power, but with that, a lot more responsibility. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.